he ended up being like, hey, I want to bring you to Miami. It really wasn't Miami. It was Kissing Me, Florida. And it, <laughs> that is a different no! place. No. Another episode of Girls Gotta Eat. Welcome back. Cancer season's over. Gosh, she's still trolling me. <laughs> <laughs> it's over and you're still trolling me. We're back in the studio with Azul. I missed him. Hi. Um, I'll tell you who is not on a hydration journey. Who? Azul. Why? He's not drinking? He doesn't drink a lot of water. Is this a new thing? And he didn't pee for like 15 hours. I just kept taking him out. He just wasn't peeing. He's fine. Nobody, nobody okay. be alarmed. I already talked to Dr. Lisa. He's just not a big oh. hydrator. He's not. He's like me. He doesn't <laughs> like have drink a lot of water. That's what we have in common. Like I have to really entice him to drink water. I have to go what over there with, with like the he pitcher. You pee. Well, it, it, he likes it if it's like fresh coming out like he can see it coming out of the picture that's why you pee with the door open always you know flush what <laughs> what does that have to do with anything and it entices him to pee oh oh you okay got it yeah i do a tutorial <laughs> like this is how we do it i lift my leg i actually forgot you do that i just had a whole conversation with you while you pee and it was nice Guys, is this weird? <laughs> no, I don't think it's weird. I would never take a shit with the door open. That's insane. We did something insane yesterday that was very weird. Can we talk about it? Raina, I thought that was like a secret we were taking to the grave. I, I want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll All right. We're going to take our partners and we're going to try this is fucking crazy. Oh, my God. I was going to talk about it on Instagram that I didn't. We'll just tell more people. Um. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Raina, this is... I don't know. Let me think it over while you, while you <laughs> okay. read these. Thanks to Pretty Litter for supporting Girls Gotta Eat. Pretty Litter ships free to your door in a small, lightweight bag. Go to prettylitter.com slash GGE to save 20% on your first order. And thanks to HelloFresh for supporting Girls Gotta Eat. Go to hellofresh.com slash GGE16 and use the code GGE16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. Yes, and big shout out today to Helix Sleep. Take their two-minute sleep quiz and they'll match you to a mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. Find your perfect mattress and up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows at helixsleep.com slash GGE. And thanks to Calm, the number one mental wellness app for supporting girls gotta eat. Reduce stress and anxiety through guided meditations, improve focus with curated music tracks and rest and recharge with Calm's imaginative sleep stories for children and adults. Calm is offering you an exclusive offer of 40% off a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash gg i feel like i haven't said that in a minute Calm. 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 a long time just quick housekeeping before we jump into it we will see you guys in montreal this week just for last festival it is probably sold out but if you it guys know it is it is um these girls message they want to come from france or something i'm like well call somebody in montreal and speak a little french see what you can get done just, <laughs> yeah um but anyway they, they told me it was sold out so if you just guys are coming up, up just come. What are they going to do? There's going to be seats. Someone had, gets, people get COVID. Don't get mad at us if you come and can't come in. Just, just you know, say, Ash, say Ashley said I could. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you are coming to the show, um, just send us an email to stories at girlsgettypockets.com. Any crazy stories about the people that you're coming with, single guys that you're coming with, you bring your man, roast your man, roast your friends, um, anything crazy. It's going to be a really wild show. And if you have <laughs> fucked any other comedians at the festival, let us know about that too <laughs> dm us that day of we'll just we'll talk about the we'll show. make sure they're at the show but yeah any you. any t- <laughs> yes we'll bring them to the show and have a you few guys of them are gonna be on the show it. yeah <laughs> um so that's happening and then of course um we announced last week uh not to vibe shift but uh we are devastated to say that we are canceling um and moving five shows in the late summer and early fall Pony. yes um, rescheduling so that will be uh again philadelphia nashville charlotte atlanta and boston um we have refunded your money hopefully Hopefully, if not, please contact your um, point of purchase and they will take care of it. Uh, we are working really diligently to move these shows and get you guys some new dates. And we just, you know, we're sorry and we can't wait to, to announce some new dates. Yeah, we're really sorry, you guys. And I just really thank you for being understanding. I mean, we got a few DMs, but no one was like rude about it. And mm-hmm. I know it's inconvenient. Some of you who maybe booked flights and like I just... I like wrote that letter for the newsletter that went out and I just burst into tears. So um, again, like the, we're doing what's best. There's a few different factors at play. We don't need to get into all this, but it breaks our heart too. So we're really sorry. We can't apologize enough. And uh, we'll see you guys when we reschedule these and we can't wait. Yeah, we love you. Thank you for we your love support, you. your continued support. We'll be back. Yes. We'll be back with a great show. Anyways, um, 
You look good today. Ugh, I'm trying. <laughs> For me, like there's no one here. No, no. Well, I mean, we're filming. You look good. We're have we have an interview after this. Yeah, um, uh, we have a couple interviews this week. I'm excited for this week. A lot of dick stuff. A lot. <laughs> Big dick week. Okay. Can I? Huge dick can week. Can I tell you, you the funniest text from my brother? I didn't tell you this. I, I was going to screenshot and send it to you. I said big uh, dick, and you were like, yes. Speaking of my brother. Yes. I mean, you'll see. So he also, yesterday, it was Matt's birthday. So happy birthday to him. He, he, <laughs> he said, he said, last night, a lady between 50, 60 years old was stumbling around the starboard and singing big energy and looked at me and said that I can tell you got big dick energy as she almost fell down. I laughed out loud. <laughs> I like watching Matt laugh. You know, like it makes oh, me smile to watch him there's laugh. There's no one I like to laugh more. And when he really laughs like so hard, it's my favorite thing in the world. I can just picture this lady stumbling around the starboard <laughs> looking right at him. She's like, I can tell you got big dick energy. And then all was falling down like I, uh-huh. just, I can see him like leaning over the bar laughing I can too I like to watch him laugh it makes me smile yeah I mean it, some of the hardest times that we've laughed like together are just I'll never forget them because it's like so special the um who were you making the the jalapeno dip at Christmas <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you weren't there for that I'm Where surprised that you were sleeping with my dad on the couch <laughs> You were napping with my dad on the couch. I was blacked your, out. Your feet, were, your feet were touching. <laughs> so weird. I was <laughs> blacked out. That's why. Because yes, you were blacked out. Because, but no. I mean, that was that was maybe one of the last times when he like doubled over laughing, and he's so huge. So it's so funny. But if you guys don't know the story, I made jalapeno dip Christmas Eve the appetizer contest and just went so raw dog on chopping them eating them like whatever bottom line my hands and my lips were on fire all night I peed on my hands at one point during the night I just went into the bathroom was like, themed episode. I'm gonna try to do this and then my lips were still burning literally at like 11 o'clock at night we're making the casserole for the next morning and I was googling like what do I do and it said dairy so I just got some sour <laughs> I got some sour cream from the fridge and like put it all over my lips, like lip gloss. And Matt was like, what the fuck are you doing? He was like, it means like drink milk, not yeah. lube your lips up with I'll, sour cream. I mean, it's I, it's not a terrible idea. Like it's actually like a pretty good idea. Well, honest. I wanted them to sit on there and like soothe my lips. It's so funny. I mean, but I he just, laughed so hard. I couldn't believe you didn't wake up. I was so blacked out. I was trying to keep up with your dad, it's, which is a death sentence. It's yeah. so crazy. I'm glad you brought your brother up because I just got the nicest message from your sister-in-law last night. And I just, you're so lucky. I mean, I feel lucky too. I love my sister-in-law, but she's so wonderful. I'm, re, I'm redoing my kitchen a little bit, just cosmetic touches. And I was trying to decide if I liked something or not and she does kitchens she does kitchens um yeah. so she like was like send me a photo and i'll like render it for you and she sent me back like some options it was just like so thoughtful she's amazing i will say that she is the most thoughtful person in my life like how are you like this the stuff that she buys for christmas is outrageous i'm like how's she gonna outdo herself every year she does it like people i really am jealous of it she has really a knack for like thinking of people and like gift giving but like how really does she don't. know my schedule you know like she just kind of keeps tabs on people in her life and like make sure like hope you guys have a great trip hope you uh-huh. guys have a great show it's like what she's really special she really really is we're all so blessed as Steph. i know <laughs> i know <laughs> my sister-in-law is like what do you do for a living <laughs> right us on in to drag her family and she would took it no i was uh, talking to her about how i want how um you and i want to do an episode about mama's boys and she was like okay i'll listen to that one let me know when it's out <laughs> that is really funny <laughs> uh, but it's really like interesting to me because i did this thing in the airport i, I was like my delay so i said tell me a secret on my instagram story and um you guys really oh yeah you yeah, guys yeah. really opened up about your lives thank you for being like that um but so so many people said i hate my siblings <gasps> significant other oh like it was one of the most a lot of people said i'm exploring same-sex exploration a lot of cheating stuff but yeah i hate my my siblings significant other and that is just it's my worst nightmare i mean you know it happened once with me mm-hmm. and it was such a nightmare and it was a bad time because Matt was like having panic attacks too. Cause it was like, he just needs everybody to get along. It's really important to him. Family mm-hmm. is the number one thing in his life. And we were not getting along with his girlfriend and he, it was like affecting him. Like he was getting fucking cat scans. Like it was truly just a time in his life. He was having full blown panic attacks. His hands were clenching up. Like it was just crazy. But after that, 
I was like, anyone that's just fine. Like any, like, because he dated someone after that and she really didn't talk much. Uh-huh. And I was like, I don't fucking care. <laughs> she, she's perfect. Like anyone after, <laughs> like anyone after she's that, like this ever. girl set the bar, like in the opposite way. Uh-huh. I was just like, anyone who is not like causing drama uh-huh. within the family is <laughs> totally fine. And then obviously Stephanie came along, but um, that it's a, true nightmare it like fucked me up so badly that like that could happen matt and i fought when he dated that girl we Mm -hmm. don't fight like it was insane um without getting too personal and you can tell me if you don't want to i mean obviously we talk about our lives we don't want to talk about our family's lives but um i like my feedback to this girl was like i put something on my story and i said you know as long as this person treats your family member well that's all that matters is that your family is happy safe feels taken care of whatever um if that's not the case that's the worst nightmare i mean i can deal with somebody that's just like socially fucking weird or doesn't talk but yeah yeah did you feel like she treated your brother nicely was he happy no, I mean, I don't know. Treat him nicely. Yeah, I guess. I mean, she was just, again, this girl was young. This was a, this was a while back. Yeah. But like Matt was stressed out all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, like I remember one time we were at the Starbird and Matt's ex was there who I had a really close relationship with. Yeah. Um, and Matt was fine with it. Like we stayed friends. Like we weren't going on vacation together, but mm-hmm. like we stayed friends. So I'm hanging out with her and the new girlfriend got upset and took it out on Matt and ruined the rest of the day because I was just casually chatting with his ex from before, uh-huh. like stuff like that. I mean, again, young twenties, like jealous, like sure. whatever. I'm sure she's fine and she's changed so much, whatever. Like, I just want to say that. I mean, you're just, we all act crazy immature when we're young, yes. but it was the way that it was like affecting Matt was like not normal. So we were like a uh, huge red flag. Uh huh. I mean, it's tremendously stressful and it would make me feel really shitty if my family didn't like my significant other. I, or I know. So I, I, it's not an option for me like I have to be with somebody that my friends like that my family likes it's it would just never be an option I know I like them too much that sucks <laughs> then, then you break up and they never like... go away <laughs> your mom stays friends with them I don't worry about that but I guess when I was young that was an issue and I had people that I had to sort of like lie about their behavior or lie yeah. about what was going on because so my family wouldn't hate them and that's a huge red flag too if you're lying to the people in your life about what's going on in your relationship totally so that is so yeah. funny that you did that what were what were the three themes you said of people's oh, team everybody was um everybody is fucking their boss everyone <laughs> I thought people weren't even working. I thought no one even had jobs anymore, but people are just out here fucking their boss. If you're working, you're fucking your boss. Everyone is fucking their boss. This girl was like, what did she say? My, um... What if you're in charge? What, CFO. CFO. I, uh, my CFO ate my pussy at a conference last weekend. Some girl said, another girl was like, tonight, I've been flirting with my boss for months. Tonight's the night. I was like, oh my God, we're all rooting for you. Yeah. Everyone is fucking their bosses. Um, everybody is fucking their sibling's best friend or their best friend's sibling. A lot of that. And then the other bucket was a lot of people are fucking their exes, like friends. Good for them. <laughs> um, speaking of fucking your brother's friend, we do have a story like that in the Vibes Only app. <laughs> <laughs> tangents on tangents. I um, was like, you fucked with my brother's friend? The, the, I, yeah, the, the brother's friend is one that I really had my hand in. I pretty much wrote, rewrote that one. And that mm-hmm. was another one that I had to stop and masturbate, but I used a toy. Listen, I don't think that manual life is for me. I think I have carpal tunnel. Oh, you went back and tried again? <laughs> and you're out? tried it again my hand still hurts. <laughs> Your hand still hurts from the last time? No, I'm kidding. My left hand hurts, but um, I'm just making a joke. But I just feel like that whole experience gave me a newfound respect for, like, guys. (laughs) (laughs) Guys have to do that all the time. Like, how are guys doing that? Well, I will say, like, I mean, yes, technique is important. But, like, if I'm just turned on by somebody, like, you can touch me anywhere and I'll come. Like, I just want my shoulder. But, like, you can, like, pretty much be, like, rubbing my clit a little bit and I'll get off. Like, I really like it. I am, like, really big into fingers. I like it two yeah. weeks in a row I'm like I'm, I'm into it and I mean I like to do it because I treat me right but like I yeah. feel like guys these these days know where the clit is and they know to just like rub it in circles uh, yeah I guess I mean some people want more of a up and down side to side vigorous like I don't know that you every, want them to do like the, the I don't know that every once a a circle you can't go that fast in a circle i only go in a circle but that fast sometimes you need a i use my middle finger and my index finger i go in a circle yeah but Raina, i'm saying like if you really need like fast and vigorous like you can't do that circles only no i go circles only you're right. going up and down. You're doing like father, son. Whole, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do the cross. Um, but listen, guys, the vibes only have. No, the brother's friend is really hot. It's such a good one. 
You know what? I really, when I was rewriting that one, I was thinking about the show All American. Like, I just, because it's like, I, I haven't you, seen you don't it, watch right? it. Yeah. 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 Remember that time I said, fuck you, because you didn't know about <laughs> yeah. it. But anyway, if you know, because it's kind of like, if, if you know, you know. But um, that one's really hot. And I just wanted to take, we're going to take like two seconds and just plug vibes only and tell you guys that the Reina is coming soon. <sighs> Thousands of them are getting on a plane. I Get think it. one yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. But we could have put them on a ship and we airlifted them out. We've yes. airlifted the Reinas. We're getting them. <laughs> we were airlifted the Reinas. Uh, well, because we were on Jade Iovine's podcast this week and she, um, I asked her for her address. We want to send her a little gift. And she was like, I went online. I wanted to buy the Reina and it's, it's out of stock. And I was like, she's being airlifted next week. Um, and she's coming. So, <gasps> and then you're going to be coming. Um, <laughs> we're not going to promise you a date. It's coming and you'll be coming in the next couple weeks. We'll let you know as soon as it's Should, in stock. Hopefully, uh, yeah. Okay. If you yeah, if you guys want um, updates, get on the newsletter, um, and yes. we'll let you know as soon as it's out. Um, but we do have out today is the lube is back in stock and the blowjob gel. Yes, get that juiced up lube. Our fucking lube <laughs> is the best. <laughs> like when we created this lube, I was like, is it gonna be better than my favorite lube that I currently have? Uh -huh. It's so much better. I will never use another lube anyway. So yes, lube and blow gel. Mango are back. And next week, we're dropping another flavor. Rain and I did so much R&D <laughs> <laughs> to test all these flavors We for dripped you guys. it on the same dick, and then we, we both licked it off. Yes, we had this guy come in, and we both sucked his dick. It's just <laughs> all for the job. We do it for you guys, honestly. It was the doorman. <laughs> it was the doorman. <laughs> yes. They're full service in action building. Yes, exactly. That's what they, <laughs> they're going to earn that holiday tip this year. So the flavor is, Raina, drum roll, you haven't done one in so long. I was going to air horn you, actually. <laughs> You tried this. Okay. The flavor is vanilla frosting. <laughs> vanilla frosting. You get it. <laughs> And we seriously, what do we, we, made, we probably tasted 20 flavors, mm -hmm. really wanted the one that tasted the best, the most natural. So, I mean, you want it, you're sucking a dick with it. So it needs to be delicious. And it's, it's unique from the mango. Like we have one that's more tropical fruity flavor and one that's more like pastry flavored. So yes. they're both unbelievable. Um, and they're both really different. So get them both and see which one you like sucking dick better with. The lube, like Ashley said, it's the best lube I've ever used. Uh, and it's all at vibesonly.com in stock. Place your orders today and then we'll let you know as soon as the vanilla comes in stock as well. Yes. So if you're like, I'm going to wait on that vanilla next week. And within the app, we have a new series that just started. It's an affair. Mm -hmm. It is so hot. It's giving me like sex life energy, mm -hmm. the show on Netflix. Yes. So it's going to be a series and the, we have the first part in the app, the affair begins and it's hot. It's really sad. I, I mean, anything forbidden just turns me on yeah. so much. And I like the forbidden stuff in the app a lot. And so do you guys actually. And new in the app, Roadhead. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley pointed to me when she said it. I one of the number it's one things I masturbate so to is this time I sucked a dick on a road. Yes, it's, it turns me on so much. I mean, you guys know it turns me on to turn people on. But um, it, the stories in the app are so sexy right now, and there's such a wide range. And we were actually looking at like what people really like, and the massage story, which I forgot to mention last week uh, during your massage story. Yeah, yeah. The, and then we forgot to mention during our travel episode. One of the top stories in the app is the vacation sex. So people really like. The this character, his name is Sebastian, and there are three stories in the app right now with him, and there is more coming. And he, it's like a dominant, wealthy, like Christian Grey type of person, and people love the vacation sex with him, and we have the roadhead in the rolls this week. <laughs> Last so week, yeah. Check it out, guys. We're really excited. Um, Android is almost approved. Um, there's just some different approval stuff with this type of content with Android. That's why it's coming up. And, well, down. and it has to be like perfect. Mm -hmm. Like we could probably just say it's ready now, but then it would be buggy. Like it's just it's different. It hits yeah, different. It's different. It was it, just like that green tech sex. <laughs> it's different. You know what it does. <laughs> Listen, you got guys got an Android. Give it a whirl. <laughs> I'll give anything That's a whirl. It different. <laughs> Um, but you guys can get it um, in the app store now and the website, obviously vibesonly.com. You can shop. We have more stuff coming for you guys. We have some butt plug stuff coming. We have new accoutrements. We're working on all kinds we have of really a fun butt, stuff. What did I, I thought of it last night, what to call it. Butt stuff starter kit. Butt stuff starter kit, yeah. Butt stuff. <laughs> I'm so, so excited. We're, we're working on like an anal lubricant for you and a butt plug. We're just, we're really excited about all the stuff we're working on. So thank you guys yeah. for your support. It's really fun. We we love that you guys are getting all this pleasure out of this. Um, I think that's all I wanted to say about vibes. Ben and Jen got married. Oh yeah. 
That's not vibes related. I just wanted to discuss it. Okay. What do you want to say about I'm it? I'm just happy for them. And I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like I'm loving JLo more and more every day, if that was even possible. And I just want to let it be known. We, we talked about this one time in an episode. And it was this big chunk that we ended up editing out. Not for any reason other than like probably for length. But I do have a deep love for Ben Affleck. I know you do. Yeah. You and we talked about it. And I've loved him since day one. The I'm Town a, is her favorite the movie. The Town is one of my favorite movies. <laughs> and I did fuck a guy from Boston and he was born and raised there and he didn't have a Boston accent and I did ask him to do it in the bedroom and he didn't do it. <laughs> he was it's like, I'm not, I was like, had can, none. can you just act like you're in the town? And he was like, no. <laughs> I was like, fuck you. He wasn't fun. Fuck that guy. <laughs> no, he was very hot. But I think it's sexy. There's something uh-huh. about that, like, well, now Southie has changed, by, I guess. But back in the day of, like, the town, that was kind of like the hood, right? And, mm-hmm. like, those rough around the edges, Southie boys. Like, I weirdly like it, but I've also just, I think Ben Affleck is, like, a perfect-looking male specimen. He's just, like, big, and he's just, like, you know, brown hair, brown eyes, and square jaw. And I've just always had a Big thing for Ben Affleck. So it's just like Jen and Ben, I'm just so happy. And you guys know we're obsessed with J-Lo. Just yeah. such as Anne. I cried the entire last hour of her documentary. I can't I can't stop watching it. I love it so much. And I guess I you're just, not a true fan if you haven't seen Marry Me yet. Ashley is going to troll me about this forever. She was like, I told you to watch it. Why didn't you watch it? Because I was listening to a murder podcast. It no, was a really good one. I told you to watch it on the plane. I stopped next ripped to my the he- seat. I ripped my headphones off. I came up there and I was like, excuse me, I have a movie rack. And so then I'm like, I'm telling, I told her to watch it. And then I just am keeping it tabs on her. I'm like, what is she going to put it on? I was about I to. I hate I when you were behind to- me on a plane. <laughs> I hate it so much. You were in my seat so many times. The first time you popped up, I didn't know who it was. You were like, excuse me. Do you need to have your shade up, Raina? There was a glare all over the plane. You're an and insane I, person. I yelled there right was, back at you. There was you were the only asshole in the Delta One cabin with your window shade up. I need it. You know I need no, it. You it's just burning out your retinas. The, there was perfect dim lighting. We're on a long fucking flight. Raina's the only person just blinding people. The people in front of me just kept looking over at you like, is this bitch going to shut her window shade? It was insane. And the second you shut it, it was like perfect lighting in there. Like you were just ruining the vibe. You got up and you were like, do you need to have that up? I mean, you said it with a smile and then you were like, there's just a glare on everybody's screen. It was so aggressive. I, you're right. I and mean, there's no reason to look. It's just clouds. It's the I, same thing. I just, I love it so much. I don't understand your whole vibe when it comes to lighting. Cause <laughs> I will go into your apartment and no lights are on. It's dark, uh-huh. but then you're on the plane, just burning out your eyes. I've never thought about that before. I, you guys, I don't I turn a light on. A handle on like, what you're into. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's what I'm into. My electric bill is like $15. <laughs> I don't run any lights in my apartment until the sun goes down. There is not one light in my apartment. I've been struggling this week, actually, because I'm so jet lagged. I've been up at like four in the morning, so I have to turn lights on in the morning, which sucks, and it's so weird for me. Oh, Um, right, right. But yeah, on planes, I have to have... Also, here's the other thing. I tend to listen to a lot of podcasts on planes, so I have nowhere to put my eyes, and if I close my eyes, I'll fall asleep. So I like to look out the window. It's just... it's Well, first of all, I randomly have sensitive eyes. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this. Like they really are. Like if I even, if things are too bright, I'll like see spots for a while. Like my dad's the same way. And it's weird because that's usually a lighter eyed thing. And we all have brown eyes in my family, but I physically can't do what you're doing. Like it's too bright. Like it's, it's crazy to me. Like you're just, it's so bright. I know. I need it. I just, I can't explain it. Like I, comedians make fun of this. I've watched like so many sets where people like make fun of people like me. They're like, what are you looking at? (laughs) Well, you're welcome to everyone in that cabin that I was on the plane and I could go up to her (laughs) and tell her to put it down. I was like, God, I wish she wasn't on this plane. <laughs> no one would ask me. <laughs> what is anybody else going to so, fucking do? Well, sometimes I think on the flight there, they did tell everyone to put him down because oh, it yeah. was like a sleepy time flight. This was not a sleepy time flight. It was, it was a 10 a.m. flight. <laughs> sleepy time Bottom flight. line, I'm keeping tabs on what Raina's watching. I'm like, please put it on. Please put it on. Like, I just want her to watch this movie so bad. It's so good. She puts on Bridesmaids. I never watched it in full. Okay. Yeah. Which is, that's totally acceptable. Thank you. But um, um, what I say to you the other day, I, or I, so, <laughs> Raina's been up um, at 4.30. I, I just I hate saying this because I'll tell the reference, but I don't get jet lag. I just never have, no matter what. And it, I feel very much like Melissa McCarthy in Bridesmaids being like, I don't bloat physically. <laughs> <laughs> what you said. 
I don't get jet lag, which has never have. It sounds so braggy and it sounds exactly like Melissa McCarthy being like, I just don't bloat. I can't relate. I feel like that character does not get enough attention in just like the cultural lexicon. It is a perfect character. It's, it is truly a perfect character. And a lot of people didn't know at the time, here we go talking about this again, that that was her husband that played the air marshal. Like, I don't know that. What? Well, I've never seen Brandon all the way through. I didn't know. You didn't know that was her husband in real no, life? That's incredible. Oh, you guys, I don't know. When she says, that's what, incredible. She's like, you want this pure steam heat <laughs> coming from my undercarriage. <laughs> when she says undercarriage, well, we're going to take a quick break and then get right back into it. Okay. I am so excited to talk about Helix. You know, we were away for a long time and we stayed in nice hotels. We stayed in a nice house. We were in Greece and the beds were fine, but no bed compares to my Helix. And there's just nothing better. Like I came home and the first night, I don't know that I've ever gotten to sleep that good back in my bed like the second I laid in my bed after being gone for two and a half weeks I just was like this is bliss I know you've been trolling me about your sleep oh my god I just it's so good like nothing is that the mattress my helix mattress I mean I it's customized for me it's the best sleep of my life it's made for my body like nothing else compares so uh you guys can go to helixsleep.com slash gge take their two minute sleep quiz and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life everybody's unique in how they sleep and what they want whether you want soft medium firm mattress mattress great for cooling you down or there's helix plus mattresses you can pick the one that works best for you i have the moonlight Lux. i like a softer mattress i mean you're never really gonna get a mattress that feels like that in a hotel like Mm-mm. They're always going to have something that's more like on the firmer side. Mm-hmm. So I just never really get that great of a sleep that I do really, truly in my own home. And it's just incredible. I have two of these. I have one uh, here in New York and I have one at my parents' house as well that I got during the quarantine because I was like, I need good sleep and this mattress is not cutting it. So uh, it's just, it's awesome. It gets delivered to your door. You just unbox it. It's pretty heavy. So you might need some help like getting upstairs and uh, you just unbox it it pops out of the box and you can sleep on it that night. So take the quiz and see which one's going to be right for you. It's gotten so many amazing reviews online. You guys can just Google it. It's won awards. There's a 10 year warranty and you get to try it out for a hundred nights risk free. And if you don't love it, they'll pick it up for you, but we know that you guys will. So again, it's super hot out. New York is in a heat wave right now and uh, it has their specialized cooling technology. So it really is, it's great, especially for the summer and for all year round, of course. So we have an offer for you guys. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash GGE. That's helixsleep.com slash GGE for up to $200 off your mattress and two free pillows. The Helix pillows are incredible. They just hold up. Oh, they're incredible. Um, I'm really excited that I get to do this read because I never get to do the Pretty Litter read. And uh, it's exciting for me. Um, Pretty Litter is the world's smartest cat litter. I'm going to tell you all about it. Honestly, I wish it existed for me. I wish I could pee in Pretty Litter and it would tell me what was wrong with me. But um, it has really revolutionized litter for your cat. Uh, and you love your cat and want to do something nice for them. So Pretty Litter crystals change color to help detect early signs of potential illness like urinary tract infections, metabolic acidosis, bladder crystals, and more just to give you guys like a better peace of mind. It's ultra absorbent. It instantly traps odor. It's lightweight. It's dust free. It works for up to a month without clumping. So it means no more wasting litter. You can say goodbye to the smelly, clumpy stuff you guys are used to. And plus, Pretty Litter ships free to your door in a small, lightweight bag. And with convenient monthly deliveries, you guys will never run out. So it's really nice and easy for you. You won't have a massive container with litter taking up space in your kitchen that smells, that's bulky. Um, and you love your pet and you want to do something nice for it. And I love all of Ashley's mom's cats. And so, yeah, this, nice is, this is a good, it's good squad. It is such a good squad at your house. There's so many dogs and cats. Remember the first time? Oh, because Azul's, Azul's like they're talking about cats. They're not talking about me. And yeah, you know it's so cute. He gets along with the cats. They sent me a picture. He was like, oh my gosh, he was like sleeping in the bed with oh one of the cats. God. And I was like, if Dewey could see this right now, I mean, Dewey tried to kill the cats. <laughs> That was a lot. I still have scars from that whole situation. I know, Azul, you're so sweet. Um, but anyways, do something nice for your cats, guys. Um, this is such a cool, innovative, unique product. Um, it's fantastic for your pets. Uh, once you try Pretty Litter, it will be the only litter you ever use. Go to prettylitter.com slash GGE to save 20% on your first order. That's prettylitter.com slash GGE to save 20% on your first order. Prettylitter.com slash GGE. 
Okay. Can I tell you something that's so funny? Last night, I forget what I was looking for. I don't even remember. I went on Facebook for some odd reason, okay. probably to check up on my mom. I go on Facebook to check on your mom. Yeah. And, oh, <laughs> you know what? I, you know why? I wanted to see if there was any exes in me and Matt's birthday post. <laughs> like, she you knows she does the collage. Uh-huh. And I was like, let's see if she I passed the test. I the collages your mom makes. Could, she, you there, were, there were no. There were no exes in mine. You guys finally trolled her long enough? Yeah. Um, there, it was still, like... 60 or 70 people that wished me happy birthday like on my Facebook on timeline Facebook. of the most random collection of people that I have encountered in my life. I like for it. The most p- random people I forgot mm-hmm. existed. People I just went to high school with that I haven't mm-hmm. spoken to since we graduated. Like so random so who was that because for me it's like teachers from high school which i um, love that my one my french teacher i love when she always wishes me happy birthday waiters from restaurants i worked in just, like yes yeah, like years ago like, yes, what are you like guys just doing just some guy i remember he like used to work in the art department at the magazine i worked at when i was 22 you know like just uh-huh. random stuff it's like so random just people that i've encountered once like and it got me thinking and it's nice it's it's totally nice like i just was like this is the most random 70 people i've ever seen in my entire life and i thought of like the old days when facebook was hot and like how exciting your birthday would be on facebook do you remember those days do i remember i lived for it i miss it every year wake up pop out of bed my facebook wall we used to call it a wall you guys uh before the timeline <laughs> my facebook wall is me lit today okay people be put inside jokes m- memes what we considered memes back then <laughs> gifts like it would what be- time did you wait because i would wait i would like try to like let them like accumulate i'd wait till nine and i'd like really like let it get in, in how popular i was i uh, yeah maybe it's like nice. maybe like well you would wake up and then you have texts mm-hmm. and i feel like kids these days they'll never know the thrill of <laughs> facebook on your birthday <laughs> But I guess people are still out here doing it. But I will say, I don't know if anyone else really feels my struggle on this. I keep missing birthdays because I'm not on Facebook. Like that was how I kept track of my birthdays. And I'm trying to put them into my calendar here and there. I'll teach and there- you. How are people keeping track of birthdays? So you put it, so the way that I do it is that I put it in my calendar and I just set it as an annual reminder. But like individually? Uh-huh, individually. That's what I got to, I just got to take the time to do this. And like, I've, and I don't get offended when people miss my birthday, like, cause I've been missing birthdays. Like I've been missing birthdays of like close friends. Like Facebook used to keep me in line. Every day you wake up, you get on Facebook mm-hmm. and they're like, here's whose birthday is today. And I just can't, it's hard to keep up. I forget everybody's, I don't know how some people do it. Like sometimes it'll be like 6 PM and I'll realize I never wished somebody happy birthday. I forgot one of my best friend's birthdays this year. We were sitting at the office and yeah. I was like, oh my God, her birthday was yesterday. Like it was, it's the worst feeling. So yeah, you go put it on your calendar. I know. And then Facebook, they were all in my Google calendar. It stopped syncing. I unsynced it because it would be the most random people. It would like, and I would delete that. I would get an alert that was like, here's these 10 random people's birthdays. Yeah, I still get and that. I don't want it in my calendar. I know. I so I unsynced it. it. <laughs> and now I'm just lost out here. I feel like we need like an app. Should we do this in the Vibes Only app? <laughs> <laughs> It's a birthday. <laughs> Ashley and I have had so many, like, this is how we retire plans. Like, we're not going to tell you what they are. But there's a lot of apps that we decided we were going to launch. And maybe after we sell Vibes Only someday. No, I'm just kidding. We'll never sell it. Birthday this reminders. Forever. Yeah, birthday reminders. But then also. There's definitely an app for that. Okay, so also this is the thing that your iPhone is doing automatically. I've noticed that if you, like, wish somebody happy birthday, it says, like, do you want to put this person's birthday in? Have you seen this? No. iPhones are getting smarter. Yeah, like if you say like happy birthday, I think it it pops up and is like, this is this person's birthday. Do you want to add it to their contact? I don't have that. That's amazing. So I have I have some people's birthdays in their iPhone contact, but are iPhone, are you going to tell it? me when it's their birthday? Say, are you notified of it? Like, are that's you, what I'm saying. Are they going to notify me? You guys are probably like, oh my god, they're so old. Um, I don't think they're going to tell me. It's just going to be in there. It's just in there like an address. You know what I'm saying? It says that your okay, your birthday is in mine, but it's not going to like be like it's Ashley's birthday today. No, but maybe there's a way to do it. You guys, there's probably an app for those birthdays. <laughs> of course there is. I'm just saying like I feel like I keep having this conversation mm-hmm. where I'm wishing people belated birthday and I'm yeah. like, I'm sorry ever since I'm not on Facebook, I just can't keep up. You know how I noticed that somebody's birthday is that they repost Instagram stories of other people wishing them a happy birthday. So uh, please total, keep doing that for no, me. I, I'm alerting people it's my birthday. Like don't yeah. get it twisted. Mm-hmm. That's how I learned that it's people's birthdays. You were so funny because you had like a bad birthday. And I was like, so I knew that you were getting tagged and stuff. And I was like, oh, she's really not reposting it. That's so humble. It's so nice of her. I would never do that. And then you were like, I need this dopamine hit. 
Yeah, my birthday, I had a flight canceled and it was a my, nightmare. A missing bag. That wasn't my birthday. It was really that a was nightmare. That was my birthday. I felt so bad for you. Fuck you, Tap Air Portugal. Tap, yeah. They, they really catfished me <laughs> because they, I was having such a pleasant experience with them. And then they were like, just kidding. Second leg, your flight's canceled. They don't tell you. They, they don't email tell you. you. How do they you don't tell email? You. They, don't, they just don't do it. They're just like, we're all, no, nope, we're all set. You figure it out. <laughs> you figure it out. That's what they did to me in Europe too. I'm, that's how I ended up doing this, like, tell me a secret thing. Cause it was two hours late, then three hours late. Then they were like, you can check in. Nope. You're just going to stand here after you check in. Anyways. You know what I meant to say? So we were saying somebody else who does that, like, tell me a secret thing is Allie Colbert, mm-hmm. who we had on the podcast. And I forgot to say last week that we met her girlfriend, fiance. Fiance hey? now. Yeah. Yeah. So we had Allie on. She told such an incredible, beautiful story about her and her now fiance and how they met. And so we, and obviously now they're since engaged since the episode that was like, what, a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. And we met her and we had drinks with them. I loved her meeting her. I know I did too. It was really nice. And it's so interesting. Cause I feel like in comedy so much, we spend so much time with our friends and you're always like out at a comedy club with them. And it's so rare to like meet significant others. I think sometimes in this world, cause like they're out all the time. They're going to get those home. They have nine to fives. And so it was, nice to spend some time with her and meet her in in Portugal and we like know their story it was just it was so great because you know I was so fascinated by her their story Uh yeah yeah um she was great so yeah that's a great update for you guys I loved it um I guess I have one more update to share that I think I'm gonna well I've slowly been starting to get a little more into sparkling water that's your update (laughs) (laughs) what watch her like shimmy your whole body i had this incredible (laughs) sparkling water in portugal you had a good sparkling water experience okay let me ask you this if you if this i don't like sparkling water can't relate to this so i just i'm always i'm always still yeah oh you accidentally took a sparkling water out no i've I've had it here and there but i've always been a still person that's what i prefer and do you ever like um are you ever curious about something for years that you could have googled (laughs) <laughs> like for, I swear to God for years I've been like does sparkling water hydrate you the same way regular water does yeah, you I, asked me something the other day and I was like you could have just googled you asked me what is, <laughs> currency exchange is that still a thing <laughs> at the airport <laughs> like you bring your cash and they give you cash yeah back. That's, it's just, I was just talking out the, loud. it was so funny when you, out loud. the way you said it was so funny because it's like is that still a thing like it's retro to exchange your cash in a country <laughs> <laughs> But, but like, I, I feel like for so long I've wondered does sparkling water, like does like LaCroix do the, which has minimal other stuff in it has some like flavor and whatever, but, or just regular Perrier. How, like, okay. Does this hydrate you so the exact the same way? And I've just been like, I wonder uh-huh. when literally you could just Google it and it, it does. It's the same thing. Says it does. Okay. The, I don't know the internet this. says it does. Uh-huh. I mean, it just has bubbles in it. So I guess there's a world in which you might feel a little bloated uh-huh. but it allegedly which i don't know why it wouldn't but it hydrates you the same uh i don't find i don't find myself thirst quenched from sparkling water because i don't enjoy the experience it's unpleasant yeah so i feel like people are so hardcore like one way or the other and i'm dabbling a little so but i like <laughs> small bubbles you like a gentle bubble like i mm-hmm. like to chug water just <laughs> don't get it twisted so it's you can't just like to murder back. your thirst. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I the liquid death sparkling water. They're trolling us. I don't, they will not stop sending stuff. To us. It's funny because I feel like they just wouldn't stop sending me sparkling water. They're like, you're gonna like it. <laughs> we have so many boxes of it. Our whole fridge, my whole fridge, your whole fridge. The studio has boxes on the floor. And then they stopped, and they were like, well, "Now we're gonna send you merch." Merch. The merch. I like their merch. It's, it's so cute. aggressive. But um, yeah, I had this sparkling water. It was like tasted just really natural at this one place in Portugal. And I was like, I'm thinking I'm gonna just dabble in this more. Europe, I'm always gonna. I'm always gonna be a f- still though. Europe changed you. You masturbate yourself now. You like sparkling, sparkling water. water. Yeah. You're a different person now. You said to me a crazy thing earlier. You said that you're ready to date a zaddy and be a stepmom. <laughs> I'm going to read my text because I do want to um, announce this to everybody. I said it to Hannah. I said official announcement and I sent her our text. So I just, I texted you last night. Here's the thing. I know I, I said I was on Raya. I feel like I'm not, I feel like it's taken a turn and I'm just turned off by these guys. Like they just all look 
not all, but a lot of them just looked like try hard and like douche bags and just like cocky and like uh-huh. the, the, with a bunch of jewelry and crazy fashion. And I'm just like, it just made me feel like I want an adult. So I, I texted you. I said, I feel like I'm ready to date some 45 year old daddy who is a real adult and would laugh at all these little fuck boys on Raya with their jewelry and weird ass fucking fashion. <laughs> I'm ready to do TikTok dances with my stepkids. <laughs> You that said, sentence really got me. And you said, that's my dream for you, <laughs> minus the kids. But yeah, Des, Hannah's husband. And so I sent to Hannah, I said, official statement. She said, welcome to Zaddydom. They've been waiting for you. I was like, we'll see. I mean, she has something. I mean, watching her and Des, I mean, it's my favorite. He just like lets her fly. I didn't even know that. I didn't even know Des was at the wedding. Nobody <laughs> did. But I just, I want some adult. Adult. Yeah, you deserve that. So You're I'm going to manifest it. Yeah, I, I think you should put it out in the world. Like I said, I wanted a bald divorce guy. Yeah. Because we can't find those anywhere. But, you know, I still like youthful looks. Mm-hmm. I can't help it. It's what it is. Well, you look youthful. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a difference, you know? And I think that like when you date people that are so much younger than you for so long, it's just, it's a definitely a different like lifestyle. But that's what I want. I mean, you know me. I want somebody exactly my age. I dipped at the 26-year-old pool a little bit yeah. for a little while. I spent the winter in 26. And uh, it's just different. It's just different kinds of conversations. I just, I want someone I look up to. I don't want that, like, cocky. You want somebody that's gotten jewelry gone past wearing. the cocky and they're just, they're comfortable in their confidence. Like yeah, does. like a boss. Like, you know, Des has a brother. That's He's not- cute. They tried to hook you up with Des's brother. Maybe you have him. I'm not taking your sloppy. <laughs> okay, let's tell this story, Raina, because we can't like leave people hanging and then we'll get into it with our guests. Okay. Listen, you guys, we are always doing R&D for Vibes Only. We have been like figuring out like what are our next toy releases? What are you guys looking for? And we are we have an incredible partner for the toys and she sent us some samples. And this one thing looked really cool. And I will say we were like about to like pull the trigger on a purchase order. Like we were like, this looks, this is the coolest thing we've ever seen. And then you were like, let me just go try it out. And I was like in the middle of the day right now, you should leave the studio. I was like, yes, masturbate. I'm going to go down to my apartment, try it out and get the zucchini bread. My mom gave me and bring <laughs> you guys back a snack. And everyone was like, sounds amazing. Yeah. I, it was really amazing. It was so good. Cindy's zucchini bread is so good. And you brought it back up and you were like, it's not my favorite. It's not my favorite thing. And I was really shocked. And I was like, I don't know, maybe she's wrong. Yeah. So it, it was just a very novel, cool thing, but it just didn't feel as good. It's, it was more, it, was, it felt gimmicky. Like once I put it on my clit, I was like, ah, this isn't really, I'm, I'm not, I'm not crazy about this, but you know, everybody's body's different. We loved it so much. We wanted to love it so much. It looks so fucking cool. We were like, oh my God, we're going to sell the shit out of this. We are going to order a lot of them. So <laughs> it, I came back up and I was like, I have washed this with hot water inside and out twice. Raina, if you'd like to use it. <laughs> Because it was important because I was like, maybe it's just me and maybe I have a steel hard clip. No. <laughs> <laughs> but how badly we wanted it. We were like, we were a hundred percent on it. Yes. So I was like, before we say no, I do think we should both try it. And she needs to send us two from now on. She does need to send us two and she wants it back. <laughs> But yeah, everybody's body is really different in terms of like direct clitoral stimulation. Like, listen, I love the Raina toy and I love like the sucker on it, but like, that's a treat. I use the other end of the Raina all the time. It's just like, just the straight up vibrator. Like everybody likes different stuff. So, um, I used the same exact vibrator. Ashley did 30 seconds after she did just to try it out for you guys. That is the closest we've ever been. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, then it was a more confident pass yeah you know yeah well we always make all decisions as a united front always yeah <laughs> everybody who works for us knows that and so yeah we pass we're gonna focus on some butt plug stuff some cock ring stuff more travel vibrators mm-hmm. so you guys don't have to get carpal tunnel <laughs> when you're traveling and yeah uh, a lot of different stuff i'm really excited for the new stuff um so it's gonna be a great fall yes yeah, so vibes only.com and before we get into it with our guests today we are so excited about them we're just going to talk about our remaining partners for this episode i am telling you guys about calm which is something that i used 
every single night while we were on this trip. This is how I fall asleep. I like to put on a soundscape on my Calm app and I just can't imagine life without it. So this is really what kept me getting good sleep while I was away and I use it in in the home as well. Uh, This is just an app we love so much. I mean, whatever you guys have going on, if meditating more regularly is one of your intentions for this year, how's it going? (laughs) Ask yourself. (laughs) Let's assess your life. You know, are you having anxiety or you want to focus on your focus? How are you feeling? How are things going? So if your answer to any of this is anything less than amazing, Calm is here to help. They have the tools you need to feel your best. We are partnering with Calm, the number one mental wellness app to give you the tools and improve the way you feel. If you go to calm.com slash DGE, you'll get a special offer of 40% off a Calm premium subscription and new content is added every week. So I'm just going to pull up the app and see what we have going on in here. Let's see, there is a daily calm and original inspiring meditation every single day. So there's really uh, no excuse not to get in there and really just work on your mental health. There is, oh my gosh, they have Jonathan Bailey, who is the other lead of Bridgerton, because you know they had Roger oh. Jean Page. They have a whole Bridgerton theme going on, Jonathan <laughs> Bailey. So there's a love letter from an Englishman in here, uh, an Arctic cruise sleep story. There's, of course, in my favorites, recently played Rain on Leaves, which is curated by LeBron James, the extended mix. And that's just a soundscape. Um, and this is great. There's things like an afternoon reset. You know, if you're just kind of feeling a little sluggish and you're working from home, whatever it may be, things to help you focus, stay on track, mindfulness at work. There's stuff in here for kids. Uh, there is original playlist with music, afternoon nap, sleep story. So everything you guys could really want to rest, recharge, uh, go to sleep, improve focus, meditate, even just have nice music while you're while you're working. And for listeners of the show, Calm is offering an exclusive offer of 40% off a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash GGE. Go to calm.com slash GGE for 40% off unlimited access to Calm's entire library. That's calm.com slash GGE. And guys, it's great cooking with HelloFresh. It's America's number one meal kit. You can go to HelloFresh.com slash GGE16 and use the code GGE16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. You know, I've been a fan of this long before they were a partner. I love cooking their stuff. It is always easy. It is always creative. It's always delicious. There's so much variety. You can choose from 55 or over weekly options. The ingredients are pre-portioned. It's high quality. Everything is fresh and it's so simple. They send you a recipe card. I have never had a recipe that wasn't so simple to do. So if you guys don't have a high skill set, you can definitely cook this. If you have a high skill set, you will be interested and excited to cook this. It's good for date night. It's good for your friends. And you can select meals from Taste of Summer series. They have lots of stuff in there right now. I'm just looking. They have Old Bay shrimp and sausage boil. They have family style grilled steak lettuce wraps. This looks so good. Skip the grocery store. Just get this delivered to you. They have breakfast, lunches, snacks, dessert and more. If you guys are going away this summer, you can update delivery addresses to your vacation home or skip a week if you need to. The app is super simple to use. It's stress-free. And then if you want to be in the grill outside, uh, they have a cookout collection with recipes like Melty Monterey Jack burgers. I'm just such a fan. Everything I've ever made is delicious, creative. It's good for kids. It's good for groups. It's good for solo. And we will give you guys a discount. You can go to HelloFresh.com slash GGE16 and use the code GGE16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. Okay. All right, guys, we are so excited. We have a naughty themed episode today. We have the girls from Cocktails Podcast. Uh, We are honored. They just had their 300th episode, so we get them that week. Please welcome to the show, Kiki and Medina. Hey, guys. Hi. Oh We're so happy to be here. I'm Medina. People sometimes get our voices confused so if oh. you're not watching. This is Medina. And I'm Kiki, the one with the squeakier voice. <laughs> <laughs> She's squeaky Kiki. Squeaky Kiki. <laughs> and you girls are here. You did Caroline's last night. You're mm-hmm. on tour. You're here from Atlanta. Yes. So we are so excited you stopped by. Yeah, I, we are happy to be here. Guys. We just I just want to say we sold out Caroline. Yes. Yay. We've been booked and busy since we've been in New York City. And I we just, love it. We love it here. We can't wait to come back. I mean, the Ubers be expensive, but you know. They are. We have, <laughs> next time we're riding the train. I'm not listening to you. Okay. The Ubers here are unreal. Yeah. But no, we just did your your 300th episode right before this. We recorded with you guys. So now we're just like all besties. But when uh-huh. you were just going off about all your shows, 
shows you have upcoming. We just sat back and listened. It was like so <laughs> fun to listen to everything you guys have going on. You have a game. Yes. You have all yes. kinds, of, kinds of stuff going on. Can, we, can I hear about the game? Absolutely. So it's called I'm Curious to Know. Mm -hmm. Kiki and I created this uh, conversation game. It's a deck of cards. We curated each card. We were like, oh, this is a good question. This is a good question. Uh -huh. And yeah. uh, we always tell people, take it on a date with you. Mm -hmm. First, second, third, fourth, fifth date. In the middle of sex, pull it out. I've done that. <laughs> you, know, you just don't know what can happen with this game. It's so much. It's even fun to play like in group settings, depending on the group. But you can skip a few cards that are too sexual. Like we do have a couple in there that are mixed up where it's like, do you just want to end the game and have sex right now? Mm -hmm. I always pull that one out of the deck and just save it so I can throw it in there. It's a game I that really to. helps you get to know the person that you're fucking. Yeah. Whether you want to take them seriously or not mm -hmm. quicker. Like, what are we doing? So it's meant to be rom like romantic. It's for yeah. sex. It's not with your girlfriends. I mean, you could ask your girlfriends just to get their opinions. But yeah, the goal okay. is you do it with somebody with you're your dating partner. or having sex. If you're trying to fuck yeah. your girlfriend... Well, right. And sometimes that I mean, happens. we just heard a story on, on yours that you have a fan well, that just that wants to lick your clit as, suck, as, 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 suck a, friend. Her clit. Suck as a clit friend. as a friend. Medina, I'd love to suck in your clit as a friend. The as a friend, I will not forget it. I won't forget That's that a, either. That was wild. Hilarious. So I feel like I just want to say this to people just as I walk down the street. Would you like me to suck on your clit? Just as a friend. As a friend. <laughs> I'm going to get arrested. Um, so tell us about the podcast. Tell us about your relationship status. Are you guys single? Are Definitely you single. Very single. Um, okay. Slide in my DM at Coffee Bean Dean. <laughs> I will respond. I might not, but slide in there anyway. Um, we just talk about our personal um, sex and dating experiences and then we'll have guests sometimes and we try to bring in different topics and just really explore it. It started because we would have these conversations ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, sometimes, you know, when you're talking to certain friends, they kind of judge you. And mm -hmm. it's like, mm, I want to share with somebody. And back then, there was no podcast for us to write into. Yeah. So it's like, start the show. Let's talk about it. Somebody out there can relate. And it's crazy how many people can. It's like, I never, I got all teary-eyed last night. I was like, these people really are fuck laughing at us. us. <laughs> laughing at us yeah. and our yeah. pain. But they really do fuck with us. And it's just amazing. They're your, they think you're their friends. Like, people, yeah. when we get messages that are like, I listen to you like alone in my home, you know, when I'm going through a hard time mm -hmm. to like f feel like you're there with me. It's like, what? And those That's types crazy. of messages are always so dope because you, we forget sometimes that like we're doing this and it's funny and we, we meet every week and sometimes it feels like a job, but then it doesn't. It's like people really listen to us and they're inspired. Yeah. And they are mad when we're late on an episode. Somebody's <laughs> like today. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's grandmother came to our Atlanta show and she oh, was yeah. like, she was an older woman uh -huh. and we were like, she was like, you don't understand. Y'all have changed my life. There was a kindergarten teacher. Oh the one time oh that I gosh. met out at the grocery store she was like I teach kindergarten and you literally y'all show saved my marriage like he was not trying to fuck me and I was like you need to listen to this listen to what these <laughs> girls are saying it is really such an honor to be able to impact people's lives in that way I mean messages that literally say you save my life I mean it's almost too much to handle yeah. that time that, car got, that girl got in a car accident and then she said she could hear her podcast <laughs> playing it like helped her till like the ambulance got there she it's, was like what? I literally thought she I was, was gonna dying? die she, was, she got in a car accident she couldn't move she was like trapped under a car and she was like your podcast was still playing and it just like helped me like have oh faith my God. We were like, bitch she had she came up in the cast to the meet and greet we were like <laughs> what yeah it's it's real That's I mean crazy. I always say I don't care if I like ever have kids or if I don't get married because like I, I know that my life will have meant something to somebody mm -hmm. and like when somebody says to us like you help me save my marriage I'm, you guys so you guys right. do a lot of um, I, I mean I'm listed all 300 episodes but uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot that's a it lot it comes out that Rain is your biggest fan she wants to suck your, she wants to actually, I actually want to suck on your clit as a friend she wants to suck on <laughs> Kiki's clit as a friend well she's squeaky you know <laughs> I want to hear what that's like um, do you do sex related content on all every single episode or you you get serious on some of them some of them are more serious some of them we talk more about dating and the actual mm -hmm. relationship aspect of it but like i'm usually very single so i like to concentrate on sex <laughs> and if it's not a sex-based episode we always end our episodes with a cocktail mm -hmm. and that's not a drink it's a story it's a tale of cock so um, <laughs> we we always end we bring or it back other to, body parts yeah or other body parts or straps strap tails cocktails <laughs> <Strap -tails. laughs> <laughs> so, just say strap 
tap in for this cocktail. <laughs> we always bring it back to that, but we've had episodes about friendships. We yeah. had episodes about, you know, being heartbroken. It's mm-hmm. hard. Sometimes as women, it's hard. When my heart be broken, it be broken. Everything stops. So yeah. <laughs> we talk about stuff like that. Like we've yeah. talked about needing therapy. Like it's not always sex, but mainly sex. Okay. I have a question for you because you guys both live in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. What do you, and I used to live there. What do you guys date a lot in Atlanta? Are you mostly like fucking guys in the road more? Are you getting flued out? Also, can you explain? Can we define flued out? <laughs> I want to talk. We have to teach them about flued out. Early. I just want to hear about it. Later. I want to hear about it later. It's on my list. Okay. okay. <laughs> How are you um, feeling about Atlanta? These in days? Atlanta. I, I try to date in Atlanta, but I always meet men in Atlanta, but they don't live in Atlanta. So right, right. now, my I have a team of a roster. I have a team of four. Mm-hmm. Two of them live in Atlanta. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. Oh no! One of them lives in Atlanta, and the rest of them we have to travel to see each other. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And for me, I try to date in Atlanta, but I just have not had success there, and I have no problem hopping on the plane. Usually, I meet my men in Houston. Okay. Um, I just, you're both from Texas, mm-hmm. but yeah. not Houston. I just not love Houston. that city. You just get dick oh, in it's good. That's just a good city for you. The men look good. The men are fine. They eat uh-huh. food. They're uh-huh. southern. Men don't eat food. In Sometimes they just look like they're just drugged out, and it's like we're too skinny. skinny. You know, everybody's Nothing. vegan now. They're too skinny for me. I need you to eat some meat. I mm-hmm. want you to have steak like and potato. You're like a manly man, mm-hmm. like a Texas man. And they're tall. I don't okay. know what is happening with the little guys in Atlanta, but there's um. It's a not the tallest city. Yeah, it's not. The little Little men are popping right now. <laughs> the short, the short kings. They, they are popping little. up, but they're not popping for me. Well, but yeah, and I, the southern, I feel like the, they're both in the south, but yeah. the hospitality in Houston is a lot different than Atlanta. I've noticed, and I just, I just love it there. Okay, yeah. I love that. Do you have a spirit city for men? <laughs> like, like Houston is hers. Uh, Houston is definitely mine. You know, my pussy is universal. <laughs> <laughs> they could be wherever. Just like I'm with you. I, I'll fucking all fifty states. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can see you I'm driving to Miami. Yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm getting my yeah. She used to live there. I oh, did. did. Okay. I did. You, I just you are giving my AMA. Um, do you both identify? Do you identify as anything? Are you straight? Are you bi? Are you um, open to women? I like to men. say that I'm fluid. Okay. I can. It just. It depends on the vibe. I do like eating pussy because I do it very well. Oh and gosh. so, like, yeah. I like men also. <laughs> um, I like. They're my main thing. But like, mm-hmm. I like to drizz, sprinkle in women from okay. time to time because men can get boring. I like men can't be boring. Okay. I like men, <laughs> but like, I like women, but only in threesome situations. I don't want a one on one date a woman. Yeah, they talk too much. <laughs> it's but, a lot of emotions. Yeah, and I don't, I'm not. Mm-mm. And dating a woman, I, that's one of the people on my team right now, kind of. Um, dating a woman, like, it, I, I said this at our live show, it makes me realize, like, what a horrible person I am. Wait, why? <laughs> because, like, I'd be lying. Uh, and you can't <laughs> do that with a woman. It's hard like, to women lie really make to you women. look at yourself. Like, I, I look at it how, like, how I am with men. You make, you so, make men talk about things and tell you the truth. And, like, I was like, wow, I'd be lying. And I'm a fuckboy when it comes to women. Huh. I don't want to <laughs> do all this talking. Just eat you my think pussy. they just mind your emotions more than yes. a man would? And it's like every step of the way, they're like, she's like, well, no, we need to talk about this. And I'm like, and see, and that's why, why I don't do it. Yeah, she's like, because you lie. Yeah, that, like, that makes sense. I can mm-hmm. see that being a problem for me. I, I mean, I it's always say I can fuck women. I don't want to date a woman. It's mm-hmm. a lot of talking. Mm-hmm. Or it's just feeling talking. like you don't want to... It's well, easier to just disrespect a man than a woman. <laughs> yeah, you know? I don't like, want like, to be mean to, be to this woman. Yeah, <laughs> we always say at our live shows like we will make fun of a man all day long, roast them, just like talk about. The, I we will never be mean well, to a girl. Like, on our shows. And when, I, when I'm doing stand up, I'm like, can you put some men in the front? Because like I just need to sh- talk shit to them. Like yeah. I don't want to drag some woman for her job, but you know, or like right. whatever it is. But I will absolutely do it for a man. Yeah. I will. I, I like you said it. you let you like eating pussy because you're good at it. So I feel about blowjobs. Like I'm good at it, so I like it. Mm-hmm. How do you think you got so good at it? Because you just own a pussy? So, <laughs> I watch a lot of lesbian She eats a lot of pussy as a friend. <laughs> as a friend. <laughs> My friends let me practice on this. No, I'm playing. <laughs> I watched a lot Are of lesbians. Are you lesbian. trying to practice on me? <laughs> I mean, look, there we go to the bathroom. No. Uh, so there, I, growing up, I watched a lot of lesbian porn um, on LimeWire. And uh, I took notes. Did your computer survive? It was my brother's computer. I wonder if he ever was like, what the fuck? Well, it was probably the same. He was probably doing the he same was thing. Doing the same. I can't yeah. even imagine porn via LimeWire because I was just getting viruses downloading songs on LimeWire. Oh, the computer like, was done. Yes. It was like, I didn't know you could, I didn't know that it was a streaming platform. I thought it was just music platform. No, you could get porn. Mm-hmm. I don't know how, but it was yeah, okay. sh- You had to download All right, whatever so you it was. discovered. But, so I used to porn. watch that and then I would practice on, I used to have a bed that had the, the end of the bed post look like a 
little apple. It was like the shape of a head, a hum, uh, like a head, our head, not a, a circle. Head. Yeah. And so yeah. I would practice <laughs> kissing on that. And then I realized, like, I would really be in my room as a child. I don't know why I was like this. My parents are great people. They are. I don't want people to be like, you know, whatever. I think a lot of kids do this. And I would be in there and I would just be like, I can't wait until the day I get to kiss somebody or like lick a woman's private part. And so I would kiss the apple head and hold it and practice what I saw on the porn. Hide the computer. I think that's cool. I'm <laughs> hide the fucking computer. I'm a little turned on by that. Well, that you was, discovered that young. Yeah, very young. But I didn't, I never had my first woman experience until I had moved to Atlanta and met a stripper and, and she chose me. And, That's uh, hard. and she taught me how to eat pussy in real life. Mm-hmm. She was like, this is what you do. Spread it open a little bit. Lick it. Uh, so make you it were way. into women for like a really long time before yes. you like crossed the threshold into like like live, alive women. Finally, <laughs> when the apple. A, an alive woman with a heartbeat like was and like, it, we're going to do And she this. took control. She took control, right. but I was ready. I was right, like, right, I've been right, practicing right. all my life. I've been practicing. <laughs> She's like, training. Training. coach. I've been training. It was like the Olympics. I was like, I'm ready, bitch. She was like, like, you talking about practice? <laughs> practice. <laughs> practice is I felt like LeBron. I was like, I'm ready. Were you, so you weren't scared. You weren't like, what does I this mean? I wasn't scared at all. Like, you just, because I, I <laughs> Wait, think. I'm obsessed with this. <laughs> <laughs> that you just press your she's like stay ready so you don't get ready right. <laughs> the yeah. stripper comes along she's like i'm ready <laughs> and when i air pussy she was like i thought you never did this before i was like bitch i didn't you're like let me tell you about this bed post yeah <laughs> let me tell you about this little apple head bed post and then when i really got with an actual like stud woman and i ate her pussy she like reaffirmed i confirmed that i am really good at eating pussy i was like that is a great thing Thank on you. your resume <laughs> <laughs> i love that how how old were you when you first started eating pussy? <laughs> I think 25. Okay. Mm. Well, we wanted to also talk to you guys about sucking dick. Okay. Because we, the funniest question came up on your episode that some man said that white women are good at sucking oh. dick because they don't use their hands, which mm-hmm. we were like, not true. And what the fuck? But mm-hmm. we wanted to. I can't relate. And so you guys can go listen to that on their episode. But do you have any dick sucking tips that you're and two people people just love to hear you know from both of you yeah, you can each you. have the floor please you know what I have bought this spray before and it's like a throat numbing spray because I gag okay. so if I can be prepared sometimes I keep a lot of sex things in my purse and then I get embarrassed like when I have to go to the club and they're checking your bag you know it's like <laughs> damn what bitch what do you have I have like these orgasm pills I have an orgasm tincture I have wait uh, an orgasm what pills it's called she orgasms and it's an herbal supplement and then they also make it in a tincture form so you put it under, under your, your tongue. tongue oh tincture i don't i did not mm-hmm. know that word yeah so anyway i always have all this sex stuff so i found this spray and it's kind of like like a, a breath freshener you know yeah but you spray it in the back of your throat kind of like chloroseptic and it numbs you Girl, you're so free. then um whenever i'm sucking dick i don't gag and okay. that helps because sometimes when i'm gagging it feels like i'm about to throw up and then it's like i gotta quit and tap out and i don't like that that it's is so just, funny you know how guys will like say like when mm-hmm. a girl puts her hair up in a ponytail she's oh yeah dick. you're just doing your banaca you're like uh-huh. your throat spray and she's ready yeah and That's i'm ready so to go funny. have y'all ever thrown up on a dick yeah oh i have yeah. <laughs> thrown up thrown up and i yeah. they like it not they, a lot of i mean I've, I've been like hung over and something like like somebody thrusts when like i don't think they're gonna thrust you just like gag a little food up on it yeah. and i like to keep it really really wet and so I just, honestly, I think about food. And so I think about delicious food, and it just makes Ooh. my mouth salivate, like, extra. So then it stays way wetter while what? I'm What? Yeah. I'm, I'm, these a, tips I'm a hungry girl. <laughs> you, you girls got to eat. Yeah. <laughs> Do you vary? Wait, what your, kind of food? Yeah, I know. Like, you vary what kind of food you think it, about? It depends, it, yeah. Like, is it dick-shaped food? No, I've been thinking about crawfish, actually. I love crawfish. <laughs> Well, you're from, are you from Louisiana? Yeah. I'm a, I love them. She's thinking you know, about you an head on a crawfish. She's sucking yeah. a dick. She's like, mm-hmm. you know what I love? It's like, oh, those are food. so juicy and spicy. Like, it's so good. Okay, mm. I, that is a really great tip <laughs> to make yourself salivate. Yeah, because sometimes it's hard, especially if you've been drinking. And if you like, can't think about food, just put the dick as far back in your throat as you can, like you're going to throw up and kind of make yourself gag. Mm. And then you just naturally salivate. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. What yeah. I, I want more tips. I have questions. <laughs> okay. Um, so those are your, your best mm-hmm. tips for sucking dick. Yeah. What are your best tips? So I don't, I'm not that good at it. I don't know what happens when you hit your thirties. I used to be really good at sucking dick. I'm a lazy dick sucker. So I'm going to hit you with one of them ones where I'm using my hands and putting a lot of spit in my hand. So it's just gliding through and you think my mouth is on it, but uh-huh. it really is just on the head. Mm-hmm. I, I don't have any tips for y'all. So that's a, 
<laughs> but that's, that's a great it. tip. A lot of people I mean, don't want to fit the whole thing in their mouth. I mean, mm-hmm. we 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 did a whole episode on um we did it on Valentine's Day. We did a <laughs> an anniversary blowjob episode because it's intimidating to some people, and we have a younger audience, and so there's plenty of younger women out there that are just like intimidated by sucking dick from what mm-hmm. they've even seen in porn and whatever. And so some of it is just being like, here's what you do. You just slide your hand up and down and you know what I mean? And yeah, it make makes it, it simplified a little bit. Not everybody needs Sometimes to be a Sometimes I even star. gently scratch the side, the insides of their thigh. It feels really good. Have you ever had, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. when somebody's eating your pussy and they, sl- they like, Mm-mm, scratch no. the inside of so your thighs? So I, d- I do that because I like it. So mm-hmm. it's, like, I love a light touch. Like, I love, like, fingers really lightly on my, especially in that area. So it's, like, I do it to... You do it to guys them? because I'm like, if I, you know what I mean. They Sometimes like it. Mimic what you like done to you naturally. Mm-hmm. So I'm always up in the the thigh gap. So I, area. you know, it's interesting. Well, I, I don't like when people go down on me. I just, I, it's not for me. I don't really? care about it at all. So I wouldn't, I, th- I wouldn't love need to do that. I do too. Can't never. Relate. I, I just, I don't care about it. Like I don't mm. want, I don't want it. I just don't like it. Um, but I, I don't. No one's ever like done that to me, so I wouldn't have thought to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like some like taint play. Do you guys like? Do you do, do you do anything with the balls or the butthole or the taint? Oh yeah. Let's talk, let's the talk bottom about of it. the what? The taint or the butthole or the balls. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so like I like to put, bo- if I can fit them, both of the balls in my mouth. Wow. Yeah. Sometimes they're kind of small, so it's much easier that way. Mm-hmm. And when they're too big, it's like, girl, please, you know you're not about to do this. Um, but I like to just put them in there and just kind of swish them around in my mouth a little bit. What, you, you what food are you thinking about then? I don't know. <laughs> Oysters? <laughs> you know what? I probably am going to do that. Boudin balls? <laughs> Boudin balls is a good one. But I try not to think about food on the balls because I'm I might bite. So, <laughs> there so he might soft? like it. He might, uh, but I don't. I don't want to try that. That's a tough one. But I also like to do that, and then I try to work my way down. We were talking about eating ass earlier on our episode. I like doing it. You do, and that I work my way down. So after I'm at the balls, I try to use like maybe like this little pressure point on the inside part of my thumb and like rub it on his asshole okay or like my knuckle and see like how he reacts and then i work my way down and like rim it it's such a good tip for people that don't want to stick a whole finger in a butthole or like somebody's like claw nails like you and me Mm -hmm. like that you don't want to stick a whole just the nub is nice just the knuckle I and have, they like that pressure. I haven't pressure. dealt with a lot of grown men that will um, let me play with their booty holes, mm-hmm. but there was one specific dude. Um, he was a horrible person, but I, I was like, let me let me play with this. I because I, I could tell he wanted it. He kept he kept like yep. w- and I was like, okay, do you want me to lick your booty hole? And he was like, I do. And <laughs> he's backing first- it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you, you can feel it when they want you. <laughs> <laughs> they try to like lift up a little bit. I was like, what is going on? So so I did it, and he, he, it was like a face down ass up situation. He just as soon as I said I was okay with it, he turned over and, all mean, fours face in the pillow. All fours. I was <laughs> spread. I had ass in my face. And there was like moments where I was so. But when I did it that first time, it was like every time after that he would Disney princess dive on the fucking bed and spread his butt cheeks and he was like bitch you know what time it is and I was like oh no I'm every you can't eat booty hole every no, time no you gotta keep it a treat it's a treat yeah, that's it's not a all treat. the time we're not doing it's this every time we fuck my face was smelling like ass yeah. permanent like at booty hole even if it's clean booty hole it has a a smell for sure it's a butthole mm-hmm. it's a booty hole yeah. like there was dookie down here at some point today oh, hopefully <laughs> and i was really eating his booty hole and <laughs> how long did you yeah. wait before like how long were you having sex before you had the butthole like how i would say weeks? maybe four weeks so a, a bunch of sexual encounters but okay. each time in those sexual encounters like i said he was like Inch in the booty hole. Who's yeah, now yeah. booty hole closer? For, Nobody has ever done that. Dive on the bed and just been like, I'm ready with legs. Sounds and he had the nerve to act like he had never had that. He was like, oh my God, this is the first time this has happened. No, it's not. No, it's and not. And you're like, that's been the here 20th time you've said that. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, you know, Sorry, if you like a little booty hole, just say that. We've said this, but I've... um had my ass eaten but i've never done done it back mm-hmm. is it just you just do it for foreplay just for a couple minutes like you're not doing that no, it's not a couple minutes you really get in there i, I think um, it's you're real I, I was really in his booty hole okay. are you jerk do you, you like to jerk there. somebody off while you do it he, yeah he I was do. turned around he it was just booty hole <laughs> so his dick, was, was on, his dick was on like he's face he's laying flat mm-hmm. right i rubbed it i slapped his ass because i like I the idea of being on your okay i did not do all of that every time 
Bella perks up. I'm just, have, you have, y'all ever, ass, like, have y'all ever dated a man that had like, uh, like he was supposed to be a woman? Like his booty was like a woman booty. Like, like it was, nice. yeah. it was juicy. So, I don't, did he have hips? He had too? a fat ass. See a man. Is <laughs> he a pear shape? I always say when I see men like that, it's almost like the God was rushing it at the last minute. He was like, that's supposed to be a woman, but like the angel just put a man head on. He's like, oh shit, that's a mistake. <laughs> and but then no. God was like, he's gonna have a, a butt kink, like yeah. a butt fetish. He's gonna really like. And, yeah, but I was jiggling his booty cheeks and like Medina. he liked it and I, if that's what you like during sex when I fuck I want to make sure you have a great experience and yeah. I was back there like wow he likes this this yeah. is interesting okay this is not happening to me it'll be just, just a couple minutes for me I in like a thong bikini like I want to see <laughs> I want to see this guy like at brunch so that like I know yeah. he's all cheeked up he's with like, the hats on and with the, the brunch hats boots. on he be all you, he ended up writing a six page google doc about me when we ended things and sent it to my mom and my Wait, best friend what? what and my sister what do you mean? and my brother about, on like, Instagram. About good about you? No, it was no. all bad. It was all bad. He said I should have, I needed to, I never offered to pay for a date and that was a problem and I was like. How long were you guys dating? Not even, it was maybe a month. A month? A, a maybe a month. he sat down on his computer. Ma- he sent it to her on Instagram. And then he like, sent what me is, the email. Y'all, like it was crazy. Like a link to a Google I said, Doc do you know if I tell everybody how I was eating your booty hole? That wasn't in the email, I guess. That, he left that out. I was like, you didn't <laughs> tell him I was doing that though. <laughs> I was so mad. I would have I would have put every other person that he sent it to, CC'd him, and be like, let me tell it from my end. I'm talking okay. about jiggling his ass cheeks, <laughs> Disney princess diving on the bed, ready for his ass to be. And I would have been like, let me clear my name. Did you did you reciprocate? I told him if he ever did anything, if you ever contact me ever again, I will call the police. Yeah, that's wild. That's crazy. It, it makes was, me mad thinking about it. Like it was it was contacting I'm gonna show my it family. To y'all when we when we uh, your mom's gonna be like, thank you, person I don't even know who knew my daughter like for a month. To Thanks for the information. Yeah, like, let, me ground yeah. my, let me ground her. He put quotes of things I should have said, like, hey, baby, I got this hookah coal. What? <laughs> what? A- this appetizer's him? on me. No. I met him at a networking event. That guy has He's a problems. businessman. He's got, yeah. He, he wants to be treated issues. like a lady. <laughs> in every way. <laughs> a lady Smack in the my streets ass. and a freak in the sheet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a lady in the streets. <laughs> well, we wanted to talk to you guys about pain for dates. Mm-hmm. Since oh, then. no. No. <laughs> <laughs> no i love when you ask a question someone's like no next question no um, i it's against my ministry um uh, i will absolutely take my girlfriends out and i'll be like oh, it's my treat yeah but the men know Mm-mm, okay yeah. so first date second date third date like how how when am i gonna do, pull out my no, I have a lot of, okay do you superficially motion no i don't bother because if he says do yes that. then don't call my bluff i'm not doing it i'm just we're yeah. gonna look at each other forever I will treat eventually. There's no numbered date. Okay. But I just feel like they should not expect that from me. It's a treat. I mean, I, I think about this a lot. I go back and forth. I feel I have a lot of different feelings about it. And then I'll like see some TikTok that makes me think about it in a different mm-hmm. way. And we were like watching that one about how, why are we making it easier on men to date? If you are a feminist or you want equality, why are you making it easier? Why are mm-hmm. you offering to do more? And we do so, this isn't a hot take, but like we do so much more to get ready for a date. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we, we put I so all the time. It's expensive. We put so much money. Like if you really break it down and again people have various schools of thought on this and none of it's right or wrong it's all like personal and how you feel but like we really do spend so much more time and money getting ready for a date Mm -hmm. and I feel like most of the guys I've dated you make a significant amount of money more than me well no. that's part of it too like if yeah. it's if that's like you know it's that's a, mm-hmm. a known thing I, yeah. I i don't understand what men get from it like i the <laughs> dude who wrote the six page google doc he gave me a little bit of ptsd so i'm not gonna lie like now that i date i either bring up the discussion like are you one of these men that be listening <laughs> to the podcast uh, that these dumbass men be making and you're like and when you gonna pay for a date like do you feel like that because if you do i'm not sure that i'm gonna be the right one for you i'm not paying for a date and yeah, i'm not paying, paying at all yeah I'm, i don't feel bad about it like I'll do other things. Like don't get it. To, I'm not saying I'm just gonna sit back and you gotta pay for everything mm-hmm. and you pay my bills and you pay. I, I don't. I can plan a date and I can pay for it. We can go do an activity because yeah, you're, you're plan, probably not you gonna plan do an activity. It. I planned it. I paid. Okay. Like if we're gonna right. go for it. Like when you were taking somebody to the Porsche experience. Yeah, I paid for it and that was exp- That was more than dinner. Like it was. It was just. It's you something about mm-hmm. taking me on a date to go eat and have drinks. I don't feel. I don't want to reach for my purse. Mm-hmm. I don't. I feel ugly okay. when and I do that. I feel like an ugly woman when I do that. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, I, 
and I don't like feeling like that. I Who don't does? like any weirdness about money. I just I don't agree with you guys, and we're we can agree disagree. I feel like nobody owes me anything, and so I'm more comfortable in a situation where we split or I at least offer. Mm-hmm. There are lots of situations where somebody makes so much more money than you, and they're taking you to a place that you didn't pick, and they can afford it. You can't. So mm-hmm. why should you be on the hook? But I do always offer, and I mean it. It's not like superficial because mm-hmm. I don't want to that feel like I owe kind. somebody anything. I mean, I don't, I don't be feeling like I owe you. It's not to <laughs> yeah. be kind. It's not to be kind. I, mean, I, don't, want, I don't want to be bothered. I mean, if <laughs> someone what entitlement feels like, and I'm not going to make it weird. If a man yeah. says I want to pay, I'm not going to be like, but uh, I'm not. I'm just. I'm not going to create a but situation. But for, for me, a first date, you if you ask me out. On a first date, I do not want to pay. Mm-hmm. I maybe I'll do a, a reach, but if if you take me up on it, like the only time I've I'm really, not back. I really and my <laughs> pussy dries up, so it's not even my body don't like it. So no. and, and like a couple times, like we we had this. I went out with this guy, and I like insisted on splitting it because I was like, I never want him to contact me again. I don't want him to get it twisted. Like I don't want I him to that. see me again. Oh, I'm on a date that, too. I'm like, yeah, like I'm never gonna see the I'm like making again. a statement. Matter of fact, baby. I'll pay for the whole thing. Don't yes, ever like, let me treat you. But if I pay, no. But honestly, I'll be honest. Like if I a guy asks me out and we go out, we have a couple drinks, and I do expect him to pay. I mm-hmm. he, it's it's not expensive. Like we, but I've gone on dates that lasted the whole night long, and like we go to a bunch of different places, and I picked up the tab at like one of the places too. Mm-hmm. Like I'm okay, like, oh, let me run to the bar and get drinks for us. Mm-hmm. Like I don't need you to be on the hook for hundreds of dollars. We're running around. Where it's an eight hour date, but yeah. like I would not like it if someone asked me out. The tab comes. It's under a hundred dollars and yeah. he expects we're splitting like I, I did a lot to get ready for this mm-hmm. i put more time and money i and like, went out with somebody else who wasn't gonna ask me to split the check mm-hmm. i picked you now i'm mad mm-hmm. i don't like when people make it weird and i yeah. went on that that day when we first started the podcast i went out with this guy and he made it oh he like God. insisted i split with him so and crazy that behavior is gross Wait, and weird. he made we her go to the like, atm how did the, the conversation go he i walked up to the bar he had already gotten a drink and mm-hmm. then i ordered from the bartender and the bartender was like it was like it's so and so amount of money and they were like it's just cash and I was like oh shit and he just didn't say anything and he was like the ATM's like over there uh, and like I should have calling just, the police that was like Probably five years ago face. so oh. I don't know that I like I was uncomfortable today I'd be like this is I don't like this I don't like this mm-hmm. feeling I don't want somebody to make me feel like I owe them anything yeah, that's weird so I, I don't want to con- contradict myself I, I do genuinely offer to split and I mean it but I'm not going to make it weird and I'm happy but also I think mm-hmm. I mean it comes when it comes down to like you really knowing somebody you're dating somebody you know what each other kind of make like mm-hmm. if you're going out with a man that has trying to give the vibe that he has money then he yeah he better it's like if we go to the club and you I want feel. bottle yeah. service and we got champagne flying all night you're spending thousands of dollars yes. at the club and yeah, you're you complaining about dinner and again so that that's why sometimes sense. with men i'm like what are you getting from this what does it do for you yeah. when you see me re- like i need to know that part and there's I, a guy that i'm dating now and i did we've gone on a lot of dates i'm we're probably on like date number nine tomorrow will be 10 and he has paid for everything he's never even brought up like do you like you're never even you know sometimes people don't say anything but they give you the vibe like okay, well, well, when you gonna chip in and so what i did was i did ask him because the again the google doc it made me when i read through it and i'm gonna show y'all after the show okay it made me think like okay am i selfish am i being being too entitled is this rude is this wrong i want to make sure i like him so i told him i was like hey do you want me to are you do you want me to pay for something he was like, if you ever ask me that again. Okay, no. great. That's, that's another the, that's the thing. precedent, and he doesn't want you to ask, and that's great. Mm-hmm. I've met a lot of guys who feel that way. They're yeah, like, like, don't do that to me. Why like, would I do that? I would love that. Mm-hmm. And then there's guys. <laughs> yeah. that that's my type. <laughs> but there's, Rain and I have dated guys that we make more than. It's, mm-hmm. Everybody knows it. It's obvious. We do really well. And it's, Are you okay with like, that? Um, it's, uh, we've done it. It's not... The, <laughs> She's like, uh, we're single, well, so yeah. <laughs> um, it's not my favorite dynamic to be it's honest. Not the best dynamic. Uh-huh. Again, because Do you think I they feel act different yes, when they know everybody that everybody acts different. I think the dynamic is just different. I don't care how toxic this sounds. When your man don't got you and he can't have you financially, not that you need him to take care of you, because I feel like people want to take that and be like, well, if you can't take care, oh, I can. But it's something about when your man, you know, he has your back. Like it makes your pussy wet. And so when my pussy can't get wet or I'm looking at you like, oh, I got to help. It just, it, the dynamic of the relationship isn't healthy to me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I want someone that can match me. I mean, I'm, I'm looking for that person, but yeah. it's, we've talked about that before. Like you want me to pay or split 
the first date, the pussy is dried up. Yeah. Well, there's and no, if it's a test that you're putting me through, I'm failing it now. So I y'all like gotta tests. pick a different test. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't want money to be a factor in my relationship. I'd that like would to be date ideal. somebody that makes exactly what I make. I don't want there to be some imbalance where somebody is just like I mean, listen, it'd be really fun for somebody to ball out and I don't have to pay for anything. I can't relate. Wouldn't that be great? I, <laughs> I don't like that. I certainly don't like the dynamic where like, I want to live a certain lifestyle and you can't afford it. So I'm paying for it. Cause I'm like, I'd rather do it with you than not do it alone. Mm-hmm. And then I'm just mad all the time. Like that. I don't fucking want. Yeah. I like that you asked that guy. I mean, mm-hmm. and I also mm-hmm. think like you, you don't want to get in a position where you feel like you're dating a guy, for example, that's paid for all this stuff and then it feels like you owe him something and mm-hmm. obviously you don't feel like that, right? No, I don't yeah. feel like that. But I do feel like that with the woman that I'm dating and that's why I can't do it no more. Because <laughs> okay. like she's buying me things that are expensive and we went on a trip and she paid for everything and I feel like I owe her something. And uh-huh. It's because she's a woman. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't feel like that with men. I, and I'm like, am I supposed to give but, I mean, that's, that? that's like a toxic thing too and that's yeah. just like not a great guy is a guy that thinks because he dropped a bunch of money, you have to suck his dick. Like yeah. that's not oh, yeah. and I think that people forget sometimes, like aside from spending money on whatever experiences you're having with somebody during the dating process, date people that like you back. Right. And stop sometimes I think that men get scorned because they take a girl out who they really liked and they spent all this money on her. She really wasn't interested in him. She was in it for the ride. And when it doesn't work out, now you feel like everybody is like that. That girl never liked you from the jump. And you knew it. If you like if you dated somebody who actually liked you, you probably would have had a different outcome. And I, maybe you would have felt that. better along the way. Like, it wouldn't feel like you were always just spending money and getting nothing. Yeah, nobody wants to feel taken advantage of. It's a yeah. terrible right. feeling. It's like, what were we doing here? And remember, yeah. you can't always buy us. Some of us are for sale, but <laughs> not everybody <laughs> is for sale. So you have to remember so that. Like, sometimes, guys, I really think that they think because they spend X amount of dollars that all of a sudden, you're theirs. Yeah, and it wasn't enough I dollars don't for them feel to like say that. that to me. <laughs> Nobody's ever spent that much on me. And if somebody <laughs> wants to have an experience I can't afford, which I can't relate, but I mean, <laughs> if, I'm, because again, I'll date people like that. But if, if somebody I'm dating is just like they want to ball out like crazy and I can't afford it, that I don't feel bad about at all. It's like that—that's yeah. a choice you made. You I didn't know I don't have any of this, it. so yeah. you can pay for it because you're asking for it. Mm-hmm. You know, I love what you said that it's like guys could get scorned because they just think everyone's a gold digger. It's like mm-hmm. maybe you just weren't picking up on vibes of women that didn't like you mm-hmm. right you know she so showed you up because she was used. hungry you felt used she girls gotta eat yeah but i mean <laughs> one of one of our best guy friends i mean and he's he's a guy that's really successful and he's married now has a child but he dated so much in new york city and he was like i put so much money into it he was like i just i luckily i had it to spend i spent so much money taking women on dates and i'm glad i did it i found the one mm-hmm. you know and i think he a good felt that too he's like mm-hmm. How much did she spend to come on this date and mm-hmm. get ready and, right. you know what I mean, wear a nice mm-hmm. outfit and get your, get your hair done, nails done, all this stuff. And again, some of this can sound a little dated, but some of it still very much applies today. I'm still spending money on my, my appearance. My you Sephora haul costs me like yeah. Every time. Are you sure you don't want to just get the credit card? You can get 25% off. You have 5,000 points. No, shut up <laughs> and stop telling everybody how many points I have. I know I have a lot of points. Give me the free stuff and let's go. I have I'm a question for you guys. How much do you think a first date should cost like is going out to dinner too is that too and do you even like to go on a dinner date? oh i like a I dinner like day I, a this girl said okay. a first date yeah for a first date we can go to dinner i want to go somewhere where we can talk it doesn't have to be an expensive restaurant although i love those mm. <laughs> um that's what i do in my spare time okay um but i want to anything that we can do where we can actually talk because i do want to get to know the person whoever it is um I don't know how much to say to spend because I don't spend it. What do you <laughs> <laughs> call somebody you went on a date with? How much yeah, was this? It, how it, much was our first date? It's a trick. I asked a guy that I used to date um, how much does he think a first date is because again I'm not paying for the dates either, and he <laughs> he said in Atlanta. About five hundred dollars for a first date. <laughs> and but you y'all went to more you, than one place. We went to more than one mm-hmm. place, <laughs> and that sounds crazy because I would never. And it I'm trying to date him. Is he you single? <laughs> Are you getting bottles? Okay, like, so listen. What happened was like he did end up getting a bottle. That's what he they got a hookah. Do. It's the Atlanta. Hookahs would sometimes be a hundred. You know we love hookah in Atlanta. It, yeah, if we're getting a section, and I was like, wow. So then there's a minimum. So you might have spent two hundred dollars at dinner, but you wanted to go to like a club or a lounge, and it's three hundred fifty dollars to sit out. You got to get a bottle. And okay, are we something. Ubering? Do you guys want this on a first date, or do you feel like it's a little too much? Oh, it's fine. Okay. I, 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 the crazy I'm thing in there. Is, to me, 
<laughs> yeah, I don't care how how much you spend, whether it's not a lot or it I, is I a just, lot. We could have gone to the food truck part. Did I don't, we have I don't mean like dollar amount. I mean, do you feel like it's the a little experience. too show offy? But that's too. Atlanta, honestly. True. True. Like it's, I just feel like if you're gonna, but truck park. if you do, the, we could have. <laughs> we could have had a picnic. Like well, I'm fine with a cute little picnic. I had a bad picnic, and I'll never do that again. The first date picnic. Yes, it was hot. First date picnic, and she got engaged to him, but then they didn't get married. So damn. Maybe. It's all. Started it was July picnic. in. Um, Fuck no. In, in Atlanta? In Atlanta. No. Hot as hell. It was a food truck festival. Okay. So in theory, it sounded she nice, but they should have had that in October. Atlanta He didn't have a blanket. Be. He didn't oh. have anything. Oh, okay. Then he you went, gotta make it a then cute Then he picnic. went to Publix to get sandwiches. Why are you getting sandwiches from Publix and we're at the food truck festival and a bottle of hot Sveka vodka. I hope that's not one of y'all sponsors. No, no, no. I was like, <laughs> okay, hot vodka why did you bring this? Time. I recently went on a date with a guy. This wasn't a first date, but I loved it. It was very ratchet. He picked me up. <laughs> we went to go feed the ducks. Again, this was not an expensive date. Mm, wow. Daytime date? It was a day date. This was a, it was an all-day date. Okay. This so was he, a mess. he came to pick me up. We <laughs> went to go feed the ducks. It was really cute. We were feeding them bread, and then, like, some little kids came up. He was like, y'all want to feed the ducks? And I was like, look at him with these kids. I thought about having this baby. Uh-huh. And, it, like, it, I was seeing a different side of him. So after we fed the ducks, we went to Publix, and we got sandwiches. Mm, and he had got tickets stuff. to this really ratchet-ass parking lot concert. And at first, I was like, this, I don't want to do this. We got there. I had the time of my so life. It had all these old school Atlanta rappers performing in a mm-hmm. parking lot and everybody purchased a parking spot. He got the first row <laughs> and we had a bottle of uh, tequila and a bottle of champagne. We had a blunt and some edibles. <laughs> it was very ratchet. Like I said, we were, I was out there twerking on the car. It was so much Wait fun. Wait a minute. Oh my God. But, yeah. It was such a fun. I had a really good time. Wait, like, like what rappers do you remember? There was Crime Mob, D4L. I think, did T.I. pull up? One large rapper pulled like, up. Then there up. were just people that are just on the streets getting out their And it's just like a tailgate. Things. It sounds yeah. amazing. It was a lot of fun. It was so much fun. And then um, after we finished, we went to my place and we fucked. Yeah, I would mm-hmm. fuck after this date. This date is amazing. Sandwiches and then just front row at a concert yeah. outside. So I say that to say like they're, because men like to take it, the expensive date and run with it. People aren't saying that you got to spend so much money. He didn't spend that much money, but we had a really good, so he planned it. Oh, that's yeah. also really creative. Yeah. Like, is there a plan that like somebody's like I made this plan we're gonna do this thing and you're like fuck no <laughs> uh, like will you go to the strip club on the first date that's I would yeah. do that yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would think that but now listen if we go Which to the strip, strip club, club not even what strip club <laughs> I don't want to go to the strip club and you not spending no money like you just <laughs> we're not here like, spectators well, yeah. the girls are working and you need to be throwing money no don't be going to the strip club with no money yeah, okay that's what I'm saying so that could go left okay yeah, that that could go left. what about um ex- like like exercise outdoor activity. Oh hell no! <laughs> like if a guy's like, I, no, if a guy's like, I want to somebody wants to do that, and I was like. D- have you had any conversations with me? We have had them. Do- were you not listening? This is not my thing. Like, yeah, no, like, I'm not going. There we're was a guy, out on the first date. There was a guy that I used to fuck with, and we fucked before we went on the first date. And the, d- the dick was good. <laughs> and then we went on the first date, and he was like, "Let's go on a jog." And I, <laughs> a my jog. Dumb ass. You went, didn't Bitch, you? Bitch, I would. That was the last time I ever talked to him. You got me jogging through downtown Atlanta. He done left me because I don't run. There was ha- I was we like, are not workout girls. I was so mad he during that jog. Ahead of you. He was like, you he got was this. running. You got like this. a trainer. No, I don't. Where, I don't want to do where's this. Where's the lift? I don't want to be sweaty <laughs> on a date. I don't want it. I don't understand girls that do workouts. So just do you do the only you sweat I, I could do be is like, day. okay, are we going on a beach vacation? Right. Um, I would go to Six Flags. You I like. Date amusement at, park. You, like, I would you do were that. hiking at Red Canyon. I think that's like a fun date, but you're not like dr- like sweating your balls. I off. love a. I mean, it's also like Runyon. You know, it's just like yeah. a fun hike. Yeah. Um, no, that's there. not fun. Uh, Runyon Canyon. <laughs> no, that's fine. We can agree to disagree. Um, I like I like Six Flags. I like Six okay. Flags. I also I love a roller coaster. I, if you do, you too like stand in line on a date with me. I, I kind of look at you like, do you have a personality? Because you can. I need to see other sides of you. So the amusement park, that's fun. You like to have fun. I want to have kids one day. I want to know that you're gonna be fun with these little babies. I totally am with you. Like, if you are on a tenth date and all you've done is going to dinner, what? you're like, are you? Can you get creative? What, what else we, can we do? Yeah. Like, I, what are you trying to do to me? <laughs> and then it's like they they start saying things after the tenth date. Like they see a future, and it's like I will make you a single father. <laughs> <laughs> this is not what you want. This is not what you want. Uh, are you guys fucking on first dates? Yeah. Absolutely. We're grown. We can skip the date sometimes because sometimes. Yeah, before the first date. Woo. 
So let's talk about traveling for dick and mm-hmm. you, my specialty. So you <laughs> and getting flued out. So you, which you guys said flued out, and I was like, what? Like they give you the flu? And it just <laughs> and she said flu. I, I thought you meant flu. Like they were piping you down. I thought like, she she oh, replaced pipe a, with flu. And then Raina said, one. oh, do you mean getting Piping flown? <laughs> um, so, yeah. But you told the story of this guy who sat and who flew you out and sat in first class and made you sit and coach. But mm. I don't. What happened with that? Did you? What I was. This was at a time when I was before anyone tries to roast me. I was very young. Yeah, of course. You know, course. you're in your early twenties and you just. But stupid. we didn't hear the, the what happened. So what happened was, um, I still fucked him. Mm. <laughs> well, you met him. Where where did you meet him? I met him in Atlanta at Probably I think two five five two five five. I met you we both used to bar- in Atlanta. Yeah, we used to waitress at this this uh, place called two five five, and I met him like there, and he ended up being like, "Hey, I want to bring you to Miami." It really wasn't Miami; it was Kissimmee, Florida. <laughs> and it, that is a different place. No. And at that time, I didn't know the difference. I ain't never been flued out before. Not it's just like it's Florida. <laughs> I was like, I don't got to pay. <laughs> I will not recover from, let me fly you to Miami. You go to kiss me. <laughs> He's like, how about Tallahassee? <laughs> that is the worst bait and switch I have ever heard in I my life. I didn't know that part. I can't believe I did this. <laughs> that I happened really- to be low-key with my friend in college. We thought we were going to New York City to visit this guy. We ended up in Poughkeepsie. <gasps> We were in the he was like, we thought we were going to Manhattan. We okay, I did that to somebody. I got a girlfriend of mine to drive to New York with me to visit this guy. We just went to Westchester, Yonkers. <laughs> Yonkers. Uh, uh. Okay, so okay, you're so in you, uh, you were waitressing together and you fly to kiss me. Yeah. How long into fucking did you decide to go on your first trip? We hadn't fucked yet. Okay. Like we you fucked just been in kissing me. Yeah. Um and then when we got there, there was another girl that had got flued out and <laughs> by him. No, by the the rapper. No, the oh. DJ that we were um The whole with. crew had the, somebody. Yeah. And then it was so funny because we actually ended up it, when Kiki and I started recording at Mean Streets, this is one of the owners of Mean Streets. He didn't. He was like, "Why do you look so familiar?" And I was like, "I was the young bitch that got flewed out to kiss me and was sitting in." They were both in first class, and I was in coach. It was very <laughs> embarrassing. Um, I, I forgot the whole question because I'm I'm embarrassed. We're talking about tra- <laughs> traveling for you, dick. You got to- okay. So what happened on the trip? Oh, we went to the trip. How long we- was it before you had sex with him? So you were flirting with him at two five five. No, we got he back to the you. airplane and what he did on the airplane. Yeah, he he. We boarded the flight and he boarded with first class crew. And this was, again, this was a long time ago. So this was before you could see your flight. You, like, I didn't, I couldn't check in online. I got my ticket you at have the gate. Your paper. I, I met him at the gate. So like we looked at our, so when I got to the gate, I was like, oh, hey. And I was looking goofy with heels on in the airport. <laughs> Bitch, I, this was so dumb. And then I was sitting there and they're like, we're going to start boarding first class. He gets up. He's like, I'll see you on, I'll see you on when we land. And I was ah! like, Oh wait, God. what? I'm not getting on with you. And I wasn't. When we boarded, I was in the back of the plane. There was this lady named Miss Karen uh, who sat mm. next to me. And I got to know her because he, during the flight, brought me a drink. Um, and he was like, here's a drink. I don't even know what it was. I'm just like, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And my heels on. I have forehead sweat. That Miss- is so crazy. If you cannot afford two first class seats, you need to sit with me in economy. I don't even think that it was. I don't know what's worse. If you can't afford it or you can't afford it, but you just don't want to spend it on me. I think it's worse if you yes, can't afford it. And you, you just, just don't. It's all he bad. Could, he could afford it. He could definitely afford it. And um, I, he just knew I was going to take the cheaper it's, it's he, so, yeah. he brought the cheap bitch, and at the time, time I, was I see bitch. him, I think about that, and yeah. I just giggle on the inside, like mm-hmm. you are such a trash. Anyways, the lady, Miss Karen, the little old white lady next to me, she saw this interaction, and she was like, "Excuse me, ma'am, are you traveling?" She, not ma'am, she's a young lady. Are you traveling with that man? And I was like, "Yes." And she was like, "You should be ashamed of yourself." <laughs> she tapped my knee, and she was like, "I know your mom raised you better than this." And I was like, oh, "Miss Karen, <laughs> <laughs> thank you." And I still fucked him. That I mean, you were there, were, young. What were you going to do? Like, you're already on the trip. You're going to make the best of it. Yeah. Do you have any travel stories? <sighs> okay, not like that. I just, I like to go out of town because I find the best men out of town. Yeah, we so do nothing too. crazy happens in the airport. Do you, I'm like, glad. meet, do you guys do, do apps at all? I'll be trying, but it I'll don't be try, but out. it doesn't work okay. out well. So if you I meet, just go out and get drunk. Okay. Like you, you, you'll go out in, in the town way. and meet someone in the wild, mm-hmm. like in Houston. Okay, in or wild. through yeah. yeah, in the wild. I love going out in the wild. It's yeah. a good time. I've met a lot of men, and also like I like to post um, about cooking and stuff. No <laughs> finger. So the men are hungry, and when they see the videos, they think I'm going to cook for them. I don't cook for them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I cook for my girlfriends and my family, and you that's it. You can't give it all away. Yeah, they it's think like that they're going to get it. You got to make it a treat. Mm-hmm. I love your whole vibe of like, I'll pick up the towel with my girlfriends. I'll cook for my girlfriends. I'll do the all girlfriends this stuff. Get, and then the guys. Yeah, the guys is like, 
I need you to prove yourself. Right. Because you have Because women deserve it. An- another way that I look at that, going back to the paying for dates, do, have y'all ever looked at, like, the dynamics of a relationship? Women do so much more than just pay for a fucking date. When you're in a relationship with a man, they don't really do much. Women are the backbone of most of the households when it comes to, like, taking care of kids or making sure... When you think about your life, most people in a traditional Dotting household... The, the mom takes the care of Yeah, the mom is like, mm, he needs his soccer uniform iron. Is everybody ready for the trip? The mom puts the trip to... She's doing so much more than paying for a fucking date. Women <laughs> make things better. So for that, you feeding me. Yeah. <laughs> That's all, all I'm asking plans. for. And we talk about it all the time. There's so much more you can contribute to a relationship than just money. I yes. mean, there's a million things. Like, I run your life for you. Mm-hmm. I do all the planning for you. You wouldn't even have a clothes if it wasn't for Most me. Most dads exactly. don't know even how to, like, book a doctor's appointment or when I you're know. going to get your or teeth cleaned or who is. the kid's doctor is. Sir! Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know. We There's this, um, we, we didn't episode on weaponized incompetence but there's this whole book called fair play i think it's coming out in like a documentary i don't know but oh, like wow. about yeah. how much women carry the load and especially yeah. more when kids come in the mix which then it's even more to do but now we're like going down a whole like rabbit hole but yeah i mean i think it's just i don't know i keep thinking about this tiktok i saw of this of this girl being like you think you're being a feminist by paying for stuff and doing this stuff what you're really doing is making things easier on a man why would you do that and you know? i have and no I, interest she in went kind of deeper with it and i was like damn she really put things into perspective i'm interested in making it easier for them one it of my friends be harder. wow she was like you should try shooting your shot at a man i was like you know what let me just try and see how um, I feel. Yeah. I shot oh my, my shot God. with a dude and I was like, oh my gosh, the dynamics of the relationship has already started off wrong. So mm. I, I hollered at him. Uh, that means I saw him. I thought he was cute, and I asked him for his phone number. Yeah. Normally, I mean, did do you that. just define hollered? Like, we get it. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, these that means these white women. They, <laughs> I didn't know if y'all knew the lingo. Like, you didn't know flew it out. Flew it out. Listen, you're, that's you, just from the city girls. It's I not like not we made it up. Listen, as somebody who fucks on the road pretty exclusively, <laughs> I fly for dick. All the time. I have been picked up for a dick appointment in Greatest. Seattle, Charleston, San Francisco, okay. Denver. I've gone Come on. everywhere. Shout out. Okay, I know about being flewed out. I will not forget the mansplaining of hollered at just now. But anyway. So, but, I hollered at yeah. him. And he was so happy. We exchanged numbers. We started texting. And he goes, so when are you going to take me out? Ah, oh, hell no. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I'm never doing this again. That was part of her TikTok, too, going back to it. It was like asking men out. Like, why are you doing the heavy lifting? Like, why are you making their lives easier? easier by asking them out then paying for it. them yeah. like it was an interesting take for I sure can be myself like, I, think you can be, I think you can ask somebody out and then I want to retreat I just you know you can you can holler you can make yourself <laughs> known that you're into somebody uh-huh. I mean I'm never if I see a guy in the wild I'm into him I'm absolutely talking to them and then you can just sit back like yeah. it doesn't have to always be that dynamic but I don't but think if somebody you, falls up follows up with when you take well, me he out, I don't it, like because I'm not doing that again yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> no I mean I think th- it's I'm not about playing hard to get. I, I want you to know that I would gladly like to go out with you, but I'm I'm not asking. Mm-hmm. Right, because I also want you to know I have a vagina that gets wet and it's real good, and I know you want it. So you, you gotta put in a little work like this. You got y'all got a prize at the end of this. I don't get a prize. That's a great I get call. pregnant. Yeah. What? I mean, babies is a prize to like. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, this has been incredible. Thank it you guys Thank for recording you. with us. And yes. For letting us come on your show. Um, we've loved having you. Can you tell people everywhere they can find you? Your tour, the okay. podcast, everything. So we have a show in Philly, but this will probably be after that. So we have a show in September, September 24th in D.C. at City Winery. You can find us at Cocktails Podcast. That's C-O-C-K-T-A-L-E-S podcast on Instagram and then I'm Kiki Said So and Medina's Coffee Bean Dean on Instagram. We drop episodes every single Thursday and um, we're on all the podcast platforms including YouTube if you want to watch us. Pull up to one of our live shows. It's a very fun, it interactive is. I, experience. I just watched one of the videos. It is wild. <laughs> Sounds yeah. amazing. Let's just collab. I'm going tour. T- run the world. Let's do all it. four of us. We People go. will know what hit us. <laughs> um, well, thank you, ladies, again, for recording with us. And you guys know where to find us. Girlsgotteatpodcast.com. We're Girls Got Podcast on Instagram. I am Ash Hess on Instagram. Raina is Raina.Greenberg. And then, of course, VibesOnly.com. Vibes Only on Instagram. Vibes Only on Twitter. Girls underscore got to eat on Twitter. I'm all over the place and uh we'll see you next week have a good week guys bye